I'm gonna give you three ways that you can control your appetite naturally and easily without totally starving yourself, without taking anything crazy. And if you know someone that's gonna get some benefit out of this, make sure you hit that share button. So here we go. All right, the first one is coffee, and it's not because of the obvious reason. Sure, caffeine can act as an appetite suppressant. Sure, it can help increase your epinephrine levels, help increase dopamine. It can do a lot of things when it comes to fat loss and satiating your appetite. But I wanna talk about something that's called chlorogenic acid, CGA, which is sort of the secret weapon when it comes to coffee. See, what the CGA does is it affects your insulin levels. So that means when you do eat, you're not spiking your insulin quite as high, which means you're not having this big rise and fall of insulin that can make you hungry later on. How many times have you had a meal and then two hours later you're starving, particularly if the meal that you had had a lot of sugar in it or a lot of carbs? See, pretty big impact right then and there. And there's some research to back that up too. The one study that I wanna reference in particular measured liver triglyceride levels. Now triglycerides are stored forms of fat that are gonna eventually get put into the bloodstream to either be redeposited as fat tissue or used for energy. But it was found that supplementing CGA alone dramatically reduced the levels of hepatic triglycerides, meaning triglycerides that are in your liver. That means that you're beating it to the punch, you're beating the fat to the punch before it's in the bloodstream and before it's converted to fat. Okay, the next one is omega-3s. You've heard it before, you heard they're good for inflammation, but did you know they're good for reducing your appetite? Okay, so things like salmon, things like sardines, even fish oil pills in general, they decrease what are called leptin levels. Leptin is a hormone that's activated when you eat. And when you're trying to boost your metabolism, you're trying to get hungry all the time, you want your leptin levels to be high. But if you're trying to burn some fat and you wanna reduce your appetite, you want those leptin levels to decrease. That plays a big impact on how much food you typically want to eat. And again, there's some research to back this one up too. In a 2008 study by the Journal of Appetite, it was found that those that were given omega-3 supplements saw a significant decrease in hunger levels throughout the course of the day. And this was a wide peer-reviewed study that took 232 participants against a double-blind placebo. So that means that we have absolutely no variables, proving that those that took omega-3s definitely had less of an appetite. Now the last one is 5-HTP. And what 5-HTP stands for is 5-hydroxytryptophan. And what it is, is a precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin. You see, normally when you consume tryptophan through food, your body has to take that tryptophan, convert it into 5-HTP, and then convert it into serotonin. Then once it's in serotonin, it can do a lot of other things in the body. But we are skipping the step. We're skipping the step of needing the inefficient conversion of tryptophan to 5-HTP and going right to the source. And the way that 5-HTP works in the brain is it crosses through what's called the blood-brain barrier. And once it's inside the brain, it acts on specific components within the brain. In this case, 5-HT1B and 5-HT2C. These areas of the brain are specifically correlated with hunger. So when 5-HTP activates on these particular areas, it definitely makes it so you're not nearly as hungry. So let's take a study Okay. This one particular study took 19 obese women, and these 19 obese women, half of them were given placebo and half of them were given 5-HTP 30 minutes before they would eat. Well, at the end of a series of weeks, it was found that those that supplemented 5-HTP ultimately ended up consuming 37% less calories total throughout the entire study, resulting in quite a significant amount of fat loss over the controlled study. So you can see that fat loss comes later, okay? First and foremost, we work on appetite, we work on hunger, because at the end of the day, calories in versus calories out is going to be the end all be all, and that's what we ultimately have to look at. So as always, keep it locked in here in my videos, and if you got something out of this, make sure you give it a share, and if you have any suggestions on future videos on ways to control your appetite, ways to burn some fat, ways to boost your mood, ways to build some muscle, make sure that you comment them so that my team and I can look at them and figure out what's the best video to make next. See you soon.